So what do you suggest she do while her child is crying it out? So if she really decides that that's the solution that she wants to use with her child in terms of helping her child develop those um, self-soothing skills, then um, I think it's important to figure out what's your relationship to your child's crying. And it's, a, it's part of a bigger question, which is, what's your relationship to your child's feelings? Mm -hmm. And I think many of us feel like good parents always help our children feel better. We always make the feel the hard feelings go away and that's our role. So if it's you know, it's like what's your role when your child cries? To make them stop, right? And and I have a very different idea about it. Um, because I feel like the work that children are doing in the early years around developing a relationship to their feelings, around developing um, knowledge of how their feelings work mm -hmm. and tools to manage their feelings, that their feelings are so very, very important. They're such an integral part of who they are. They're not only learning what is the feeling, what makes it happen, how long does it last, what does it look like, what makes it change, who all has these feelings. They're also learning how do people in the world feel about my feelings? And that's the biggest thing that they're learning. And so we can give children the message, when you're crying, there's something terribly wrong. Crying is a, is a, is a scary thing. Crying is a bad thing. When you're mad, something's terribly wrong. When you're scared, something's terribly wrong. Or we can say, you know what? Sometimes people cry. Sometimes people get sad. Sometimes people get scared. Sometimes people get mad. It happens. And if our job is to bear witness to those feelings, to help our child understand what made those feelings happen, and to also by our, our acceptance of the fact that our child's having feelings, telling them those are a natural part of who you are. It's not my job to make them stop. It's not your job to make them stop. Actually expressing them is one of the ways that you manage them and mm -hmm. is one of the ways that they eventually stop on their own. We don't have to artificially make them stop. And so some people are worried that if you listen to a child crying, if you let a child cry, right. they'll cry all the time. Yes. Because crying so dang that's, fun, that's right? Thinking. Who wouldn't just cry all well. the time? <laughs> but in fact, children who learn that crying is a natural part of life yes. and feeling sad is a natural part of life, they will stop crying when they don't need to cry anymore, when they're done feeling sad. And then if you've ever been with a child who's cried and cried and cried until they're like done, there's a kind of a lightness of spirit. Sometimes they fall right asleep, but there's <laughs> a, often a lightness of spirit like, oh. We got to the bottom of that. Right. And it's so empowering for children to know that you can get to the bottom of that without it being artificially stopped, without, without you having an ice cream cone or without you watching a video or doing whatever it is that makes the feeling stop. And this incredible vote of confidence in the child's competence to say, looks like you need to cry right now. Do you want me to be close to you? Do you want me to be a little bit away? What would you like, you know, how, how can I support you with this? A lot um, of times you can't get those words in. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I had a child. I was trying to talk to my child, my, my daughter, when she was crying at one point, and her friend came up and said, don't talk to her. She's crying. <laughs> and it was great. So, oh, yeah, thank, thanks. But, 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 but bearing witness is really important because sometimes children get really scared mm -hmm. by the bigness of their feelings. And so if you leave them too... That can be difficult. So just sort of staying close, bearing witness. Nighttime's a little bit different, but if they're really having feelings during the day, <clears throat> you can just sort of stay. And, and, and part of it is just monitoring your face. You know, can you be empathetic without being overwrought by the fact that they're having big feelings? Because they're watching you. They're going, their eyes are like pinched shut. They're going, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but you know, out of the corner of their eye, they're watching you. And they're saying, oh, okay, she's not freaking out. So feelings must, this must be these kinds of feelings must be what normal people have and it'll be done when it's done.